This is a demonstration of an implementation of the basic tick architecture using Amazon FinSpace with Manage KDB Insights. In this demo, we are going to walk through the creation of the architecture within the purple box, which consists of a real-time database, RDB, subscribing to an external ticker plan. A historical database cluster, HDB, serving up historical data from the managed KDB database, and a managed gateway, which will handle queries from clients collecting data from the RDB and HDB to answer those queries. This demo will have four chapters. First, the creation and population of the managed database. Second, the creation of managed clusters, consisting of the managed historical database, HDB cluster, the managed real-time database, RDB cluster, and the managed gateway cluster. Third, we will query for data through the managed gateway using a KDB client. And finally, we will execute an end-of-day process, saving the day's data collected by the RDB and adding that new data to the managed database through the chain set mechanism. Let us now create and populate the managed database for basic tech. Starting with a managed KDB Insights environment, we will create the database using the Create KX Database API. Then, using data staged on S3, we will populate the managed database with the Create KX Chainset API, adding the data as a chainset to the database. From the Environment homepage, under the Databases tab, select Create Database. Here, let's give the database a name and a description and create the database. Once the database is created, we can add a chain set through the create chain set mechanism. Let's select the database basic tick, then choose create chain set. And for this chain set, let's enter in the S3 location of the staged data for the database and create the chain set. Now let's create the clusters. We will be creating three clusters for this architecture. An RDB cluster subscribing to and collecting data from an external ticker plant, an HDB cluster with three nodes for scalability, serving up data from the managed database, and a gateway cluster that will handle queries from external clients and build its query results from the RDB and HDB. To create the HDB cluster, we will reference the managed database and utilize a high-speed cache. In creating the RDB cluster, we will reference the ticker plant it will subscribe to and reference the same database as the HDB so it will know which database it will be updating. And when creating the gateway, we will give it the names of the RDB and HDB clusters. Let's now create the HDB cluster. From the Environment homepage in the Clusters tab, select Create Cluster. For the cluster, let's give it a name, select Type HDB, have it be in a single AZ, but select the AZ to deploy it to. We'll have this cluster have three nodes. The type of node will be a large node. Next, we will be deploying some code to this cluster. So we need to give the location on S3 where our code zip file is. And there is an initialization script for this cluster called HDB MKDB. And that script takes some command line arguments. It'll take secondary threads and the database name, basic tech DB. Next, we'll choose the VPC for the cluster, its subnet, and its security group to use. We'll use the default. And then we need to select the database to present to the cluster, basic tick. And we will be choosing to cache this cluster, caching all of the database, using our high speed cache 1000 and using a minimum cache size of 1200 gigabytes. We'll review the parameters of the cluster and select create cluster to start the cluster creation process. Let us now create the RDB cluster. From the Environment homepage and the Clusters tab, select Create Cluster. And give the cluster a name. Select its type of RDB. It'll be in a single AZ. Select the AZ. We will use a single node RDB of type large. 
we will be deploying code to this RDB. Again, identify the zip of the code on S3. And this zip has an initialization script. Identify that as well. And there are some command line arguments for this script, secondary threads. The database name it will be working with. And the ticker plant it will be subscribing to. Again, the VPC settings, it's simple. Selecting the default security group. And then for the database, we need to select that again, basic tick. And for RDBs, we will need local storage. Uh, this local storage is used to save the change set when staging it to add back into the database. So we'll choose the type and size of storage. Review the parameters of the RDB and select Create Cluster. Let us now create the Gateway Cluster. From the Environment homepage and the Clusters tab, select Create Cluster. We will give the cluster a name, choose type of gateway, leave it as a single AZ and choose an AZ. We'll have it have one node of type large. And for gateways, we need to set an execution role for the cluster in order for it to connect to other clusters. We have one created, so let's select it here. Now we will be deploying code to the gateway. So let's give it the S3 location of the zip file and the name of its initialization script. And the initialization script takes three arguments, secondary threads, and the name of the RDB and the HDB, the gateway will be connecting to and querying. Next, we have a simple VBC to select and its subnet and the security group. Gateways have no database associated to them, so select Next. Have one final look at the parameters of this cluster and select Create Cluster. With the clusters now running, let's query it from a client. I'll be using PyKX from a JupyterLab notebook to interact with it. Let's walk through the code. First are some imports and variables, including the gateway name. Then with my credentials, we initialize a Bodo session and a FinSpace client. Then we query for the current state of the clusters, the HDB, the RDB, and the gateway. Next, we display the contents of each that we collected. The HDB showing it has 10 million rows in total. The RDB showing it has 286,000 rows in total. And in the gateway, querying both the RDB and the HDB underneath the covers, returns back that it has in total collected 10,287,000 rows. Notice that the gateway has a few more rows in it than the RDB and the HDB. That's because the RDB continued to collect the data between the initial query of it and the later query through the gateway. Now we will demonstrate end of day processing of the data in our basic tick architecture. As you recall, we have the RDB, which has been subscribing to the ticker plant, collecting data. At the end of the day, the RDB will save its in-memory data, denoted in green, saving both an updated SIM file and a new date of data. We will call this version two of the data. To add this new version of data to the database, we will call create KX chain set. The chain set of data is added to the basic tick manage database, creating a version two of the database. Then by calling update KX cluster database, the database version of the HDB's cache is updated to reflect the new version two. So in summary, our clusters started with version one, the RDB collected data throughout the day. Then at the end of the day, we first added the version two data to the basic tick manage database and then updated the cluster to this new version. I'll use PyKX from a JupyterLab notebook to walk you through the code. First are some imports and variables. Then with my credentials, we'll initialize the Bodo session and the FinSpace client. 
to give a before and after look of the HDB, let's get its current contents. Now, on the RDB, let's look at what it's collected today, some 1.2 million rows. And then in two steps, we will save and then update this data to the managed database. So first, saving the data to my scratch space, saving it as a new day of data, and also the new sim updates. And then next, we will create a manifest of the chain set, and then call create chain set, updating our managed database with these new changes. Once these have been added, we can then update the HDB database to pull in these new changes, the version two of the managed database, by calling update KX cluster databases. And with that now done, we can connect to the HDB again, get its contents, and then we're going to show you the comparison. Here, initially, before, the database had 10 million rows, up to 4th 23. And now after, you can see the added day of 12 1, and we now have some 11 million rows of the HDB. Let's wrap things up. In this video, we demonstrated how you can use Amazon FinSpace with managed KDB insights to implement a basic tick architecture. Creating an RDB for real-time query and data capture, subscribing to a ticker plant which collects data published by a feed handler, and an HDB that serves up historical data of the database, with queries from clients handled by a managed gateway cluster. We demonstrated how clients using PyKX can easily connect to the gateway and query for both real-time and historical data. And finally, we showed how to implement an end-of-day process where the RDB saves down its captured data and adds that new version of data to the HDB's historical record. Thank you for letting us introduce you to Amazon FinSpace with Managed KDB Insights.